with the white pieces. And here we go. Okay, just like the last game, it's a queen's pawn opening. And how will Magnus react? In this tournament, we've already seen him play the Dutch defense, the King's Indian defense, the Grunfeld defense, every opening. And uh, now, okay, it's a Queen's Gambit. Maybe the Netflix show uh, inspiring the two players. Will we see the Queen's Gambit accepted, which means Black capturing this white pawn that's just moved, taking the gambited pawn, but no, the Gambit is declined and Magnus goes for the Slav, laughing meanwhile. Uh, this time not laughing about falling asleep, laughing about something else clearly, but this is known as one of the most solid openings in chess. Black just puts pawns on light squares, blocks things up, and uh, tries to stay solid. So, okay, right now Duda has got to decide whether to trade pawns in the center, bring his knight out, push a pawn. This is uh, a line I think we call the slow slav, uh, just because yeah. things will take a while to open up later. Yeah, I was just about to say this. I, I, I haven't it's, seen him playing the real slav. I, I think usually he goes for the... Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a clever move order that has actually been advocated by um, Sam Shankland in his yeah. chessable course. I'm not quite sure it's a slow slav, but, uh, um, but anyway, the whole point is that you don't have to deal with pawn takes pawn and uh, just a nice kind of uh, move order trick. And uh, Magnus actually choosing the queen, developing the queen, which is a solid and uh, white is just going for a slightly better position. Yep, Duda developing the queen there and Magnus reacting by pushing a pawn. He's getting ready to develop Black's light squared bishop. He's just trying to remember <laughs> what to do. Yeah, exactly. Which, yep. which line to test. Exactly. No, so, but it's, it's going to be like that, you know, they're going to castle and, and develop and, and uh, some rooks to the, to the same file as the queen. And uh, white star square bishop will find itself on the edge of the board on the b2 square. As white, what would your opening choice be? Um, I have played Magnus a few times, uh, normally informal blitz games, just friendly blitz games. And uh, I've tried two different strategies. One is the Reti opening. But he has a chapter on how to beat Magnus, how to play against yeah. him. And uh, there he, he says, uh, more or less like you guys, that uh, you should play the best moves, which is easier said than done, but uh, you should actually aim for positional advantages. Mm kind of make big decisions where they have three or four options on every turn. That's the only way to confuse them and showing no fear, submitting to everything I want to do on the board. Yeah. But uh, if they just go all out at me, just no fear, going for my king, sacrificing pieces. Well, a few developments on this board. We did see actually a trade of pawns in the center. So we were talking about how it was a bit of a standoff. Things would just slowly open up, but things open up very quickly due to going on the attack uh, or trying at least against Magnus. And suddenly the white queen has found herself over on the side of the board, the black queen now developing and this is really interesting for Magnus. Mm. It, it, you have a lot of pressure down towards uh, Duda's king. Yeah. So that's what he's, he's looking for, ways to, to, to do this move, basically. I would say after every move, if you have the time, I would try and do a quick scan of the board and blunder check. Uh, with kids and chess talents, basically, from Africa yeah. to play online tournament Hand and Brain. Super yeah. cool concept. Uh, businesses now can reach out if they want to join this fantastic event. We do have a couple of moves. So uh, actually Magnus just pushed a pawn. So still delaying that big decision with the Black King, which he might have to make on this turn. But uh, after Black just pushed a pawn, we saw a capture in the center, one that Yvanka was advocating. And now after a trade of one set of pawns, White's Knight has just planted itself in the middle of the board. And um, right now, if we jump in, the big question is, can you castle? And okay, Magnus delays it again. I was gonna say, if you castle on this side, the queen side, then this king is a big target. White's knight is gonna jump over, attack your queen, attack this pawn as well. This looks disastrous for black. This would be disaster again for the black king. So Magnus decided, okay, still delaying uh, castling and pushing a pawn, taking this square away from the white knight, uh, just covering it but it's so slow. Uh, on the rating list in classical chess, and you, no sod, which also Magnus went yeah, to, Magnus right? Magnus went there, exactly. Yeah. You know, then you, there is school fees. You know, can meet some some business guy, and, and like with Morten now, with Ferd and yeah. so on. You know, they found each other, and then Ferd suddenly sponsors him. And that's coming after this game. I bet his idol is uh, Magnus Carlsen. Still, I would say yes. If wow. you look at all of White's pieces, they're mobilized. Okay, uh, really interesting castling now with Black. All of White's pieces are mobilized. Two White Rooks teaming up, Black, the White Bishops in the, uh, in the middle of the board, kind of with that 
gaze, focused on both sides. The white queen, nicely placed for an attack. White centralized knight, they're all fantastic. I was about to say Magnus, his king situation was still uh, not ideal, but he has decided to castle, and I think he's banking on some tricks here. He definitely is. Maybe also another trick uh, in this position. If white had gone for this, then possibly now he could have captured the pawn after white's knight has retreated. There's one clear idea. Duda wants to break open the line towards the black queen, push this pawn forward. This is supported by nearly all of White's pieces right now. For example, if White initiates these trades, then Black is actually going to have the better pieces. Black's Queen now is going to firstly maybe start threatening some checkmating ideas. Maybe the Black Queen as well can jump to the center, attacking White's Bishop. Note how the White Queen is suddenly offside. Uh, for example, if White captures a pawn, gets greedy, then we would see a trade of Rooks and Black's Queen now just breaking through the White Queen, not able to help out. And the reason I say ugly is because this bishop on the first rank could be a target. The black rook sliding across and look at this, there's a massive trap in the position. If white plays the most greedy move and plays pawn takes pawn, it looks like white's winning a pawn, attacking the black queen with a pawn, attacking with a rook as well, then suddenly Magnus would win with a queen sacrifice. And uh, this is actually on the cards right now. Duda doesn't fall into that trap. The bishop was a target. Pawn takes pawn would have lost on the spot, as we just saw. So he brings his bishop back to a square. It cannot be targeted, but things are turning in Magnus's favor. And uh, the game goes on, but white is playing temporarily without the queen. And okay, he does this. He blocks things up and he is the only one with control over the open file now. Many people will be asking what's happening here because uh, he just pushed forward his protected pass pawn, the most amazing pawn there oh, is. And what happens here? And he's just offered it up for grabs. I think Magnus actually kind of trusted Duda's bluff on the last turn. Duda pushed a pawn forward, attacking Black's bishop. I think that pawn could have been captured safely. And uh, th that's just due to some back rank tricks, um, actually very similar to the ones I highlighted. So Duda gave up a pawn. I think Magnus, Magnus could have just grabbed it, but Magnus said, no, I trust you. And now look at that black bishop in the corner. It talked about bad pieces, white's queen being a bit offside, but suddenly that black bishop, it's just a dead piece. It's a block of wood and Duda shaking his head, yeah. but he's doing okay. He can just support this white pawn. He can protect it and... That is willing to come to its aid. And uh, Duda does put his knight on the edge of the board with the sole purpose of locking that light squared bishop out. And I like this position suddenly for Duda. Currently, it's tying down the black queen. It's caging this black bishop in the corner, as we mentioned. Uh, but yeah, Magnus is going to hope that it can be easily blockaded. You can just ignore it, pretend it's not there. And suddenly, white is... There we go. <laughs> we saw that trade very quickly there from Magnus. And suddenly, the black queen can start threatening this isolated white pawn in the center of the board, the one that has just recaptured. Mm. Suddenly, white's really weak on the dark squares. So the rook jumps in instead, attacking two pawns now. I've seen him have a dead loss position. Sometimes the computer says plus five for the opponent, but he still looks super calm. This time, no, he's shaking his head and... Okay, he brings his bishop forward. Oh, no. There we go. I mean, it's just expected because of the clock, because he's lost control on the position. And that's when blunders happen. It, they don't just occur out of nothing uh, most of the time. And okay, here we see Stockfish, the computer suggestions, the top two moves which give Black a significant advantage. They're also the most obvious moves in the position. You can just sidestep and capture a pawn. Magnus does this. You could have captured the other pawn as well on the left side. That would have been strong too. But uh, yeah, it's looking... Very good for Magnus right now. He's a pawn up and White's struggling to create counter threats. Uh, any compensation here. <sighs> okay, the White Bishop stepped back. That is a bad sign for Duda. And uh, okay, Magnus now, can he continue being greedy? If the Black Rook goes away from the center though, maybe White's Queen can re-centralize itself. He's relying on tricks to save this game. Magnus is a pawn up and Magnus is completely dominant on the dark squares. For now, that white pawn is under lock and key. Yeah, I mean, just... <laughs> okay, Magnus does get greedy, as I mentioned. And now two pawns up for black. How do you break through on the dark squares? That's a problem. Okay, uh, white sidesteps with his rook. Huge threat in the position. White... I mentioned the back rank checkmates against the white king. Now black's king is the one threatened. White's rook wants to step up to the top of the board, and that would actually end in checkmate, because white's bishop covers the only escape square for the Black King, White Queen's diagonal. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, that was uh, logical and very good. The White Queen, as mentioned, needs to centralize herself. There we go. There was actually a huge threat, as Ivanka mentioned, the White Queen and Bishop lined up on the same diagonal, trying to sneak through to the Black King. That's just been blocked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the thing is that I kind of want to activate the Rook, wow, but that's not really possible. Corner. Magnus, all he needs to do, bring the Black Rook into the game. 
back and at this point... No, oh, he would have stopped on the sea file and then it's over. Yeah, you're right, Pontus, just... And then uh, he's going to step up with the king or something yeah. quite soon. Mm, yes. Yeah, so I think this is... Uh, it's not very good for, for Duda. That's a very Magnus move, uh, stepping forward with the Black King, just covering everything, defending everything. But instead, Magnus grabs another pawn. He's actually three pawns up, and yeah. have we just seen Duda resign? I think we have. Yeah. Magnus takes the win. Wow. With the white pieces in game two, Jan Christoph Duda loses to world champion Magnus Carlsen. And Magnus is now up by one point, you guys, in uh, the final.